Now, one of the things I wanted to explain today is uh, the order of fire, if you want to call it that. I'm going to be firing these rounds, starting with the group that has the shortest combined overall length. That is the one that, in theory, should be giving me the highest pressures. I'm not worried about pressures because I've already worked up the load with this combined overall length, this powder charge. Uh, but it's also um, should be giving me the fastest of velocities. And then I'm going to work my way up to the longer combined overall lengths, which we should see overall, generally, that they are reducing in velocity. Now it's possible that I get to one of these um, groups uh, and the uh, powder charge, and I can hear it shaking in the case, the powder charge could become so light that we start seeing some backed out primers. I don't really anticipate that happening, but it is possible. I'm going to be watching for that as I uh, get to those other or subsequent groups. So here we go. Group number one, five rounds. Target in the upper left corner. There we go. Thirty one sixty six. Looks like these are impacting quite a bit to the left. That's interesting. Yeah, they are quite a bit to the left. Wow, nice standard deviation, very consistent ammo, five rounds, fired 5.2 feet per second standard deviation. Now the, um, we're ready to fire the next group, and this one's going to be fired at the bullseye in the upper right. Now there's a little bit something I needed to tell you about these, uh, and that is that um, I'm actually going to be firing three shot groups to start with, let's call it that, because two of the rounds uh, in pretty much each of the groups I'm going to be firing from this point on have got um, bullets that didn't really match what I was trying to get for a combined overall length or that distance, that, that uh, jump that I was trying to achieve. I've got three excellent rounds for each of these groups, uh, and I'm going to fire all five. We'll watch how they impacted up on the target. The first three are going to be the perfect, if you want to call it that, the perfect rounds. The following two, at least in this case, will be those um, ones that are off by about a thousandth or two. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, they are all impacting to the left. Okay, now these next two, recall, are not seated perfectly well like I wanted them to be. I'm still going to fire them because I'm curious what the uh, effect is going to be.
Yeah, that's interesting. Eleven point four feet per second standard deviation, average muzzle velocity thirty two ten. All right. Now this group has a combined overall length of 2.781. We're getting closer and closer to those lands. And um, again, the same deal, first three rounds, gonna be fired with a perfect combined overall length. All three of these rounds are identical in combined overall length and many other aspects. Then the last two, unfortunately, are not. Uh, they have about, again, a thousandth or two uh, difference in combined overall length. Center bullseye. Just off of the bull. That one's about an inch away. And the first one, maybe not quite an inch. That one felt really good. Boy, that is right next to the previous one. Now these last two have a slightly different combined overall length. Where did that one go? I cannot see it from here. Last round. Nine point nine feet per second standard deviation and a muzzle velocity average of thirty two hundred. We're not really seeing that decline and muzzle velocities that I was uh, suspecting or expecting to happen. Same deal here. This has a combined overall length of 2.784 inches. Uh, and because these are all shooting to the left, I'm going to be firing at the bullseye in the lower right. Very good. Once again, those first three had perfectly identical um, combined overall lengths and bullet seating distance to the lands. These last two not quite so much. Let's see what the impact is. Oh, wow. Now that one flew but the 11 o'clock position several inches off of my main group. Ten point five feet per second standard deviation, average muzzle velocity three thousand two hundred and nineteen. You know, I suppose I could have stopped the video right there and uh, let you kind of figure it out, but that's not how we do things here on Extreme Reloading. In fact, I think that's kind of what makes Extreme Reloading so special. Uh, we dig into the data, analyze the data, and uh, help you figure it out together. And uh, for me, analyzing the data usually uh, gives me better insight into what's really happening with these rounds and then helps me craft the 
precision ammo I'm after, all the better. You know, if I had to sum up what we just saw at the range, and in fact, what we just worked on over the last two episodes, I would sum it up as saying consistency equals accuracy. What I'm looking at for consistency is the consistency of the combined overall length. And what we saw is that this rifle actually does do better with that bullet very, very close or fairly close to the lands. But I have to caveat that a little bit because the round of the load that I'm currently using, my kind of standard for this rifle, has a jump of, you know, over a tenth of an inch. It's nowhere near the, um, the lands. And yet, I have shot some really nice sub-MOA groups with that same load. It didn't work out so well today, which is interesting. Uh, it didn't uh, outperform the rounds that were seated really, really close to the lands, but that may indicate that that load is going to show some variability. And it did indeed show me some variability today. But if we focus for a moment on the three loads, the three groups that were set up with successively different distance to lands, what we do see is that indeed consistency of combined overall length really does make a difference. And in fact, when I graph the MOA of these three groups by their um, combined overall length, we see a very strong linear relationship telling us that there really is something to this distance to the lands, and that's good. Uh, I also want to point out that I don't think that the uh, precision of this rifle, or probably any rifle, is entirely driven by uh, the bullet's distance to the lands. What we just saw is that indeed consistency of the bullet seating depth or the combined overall length is very important. We want to understand that. And how can we say that? Is it just a bunch of luck? Well, I don't think so. And here's where those two extra rounds per group really paid off. You see, those two extra rounds um, always flew, it seemed like, well, almost always flew somewhere distant. They really weren't part of the main group. Uh, and in fact, the one or two instances where the uh, bullet impacted close to the main group was also, as I looked it up, uh, a bullet that had a fairly close, but not exact, but a fairly close combined overall length. So it looks like we can get away with about a thousandth of an inch difference in combined overall length and still expect pretty good results. If we can keep it all exact at a thousandth of an inch, it's really, really helpful. But if we look again at those three-shot groups, measuring the three-shot group versus the five-shot group for each series, the five-shot group, or the, I should say the smallest three-shot group, was always the consistent bullets. Never was, you know, if I could pick and choose which rounds I wanted to include into it, it was always the three that had the consistent combined overall length. And that indicates to me, or it indicates, that that is really the reason why those um, rounds uh, performed as they did. But there's more to it. There's probably also barrel harmonics playing a role. And, of course, we can't forget role of neck tension that we discussed at length in our last season of Extreme Reloading. So this range session gives me some pretty good information to work off of in the future. I'm going to be looking more closely at keeping my combined overall lengths as exact as possible. But you know, one consideration as we pull that bullet further and further out of the case, it is making less and less contact with the neck of that case, which then gives it uh, a higher likelihood of um, being out of round or losing its concentricity. And that indeed is going to be our next episode of Extreme Reloading. We're going to be looking at bullet concentricity 
and heading out to the range to do some tests with rounds that are highly concentric versus those that are fairly variable. And you know what? I'm going to do another five shot group. That load that has worked well for me, we'll just see if this one range session was a fluke that it didn't perform so well or if indeed the, um, the group that is set up with a very small jump is going to continue to outperform it. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Extreme Reloading. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.